following video has been approved for all viewers of this channel by the Earth Computer Association for 10k subscribers incorporated. Thank you for 10k subs, more on this at the end of the video. Hi, it's Earth Computer and welcome to episode 1 of my fishing lessons video. Um, we're joined by Cortex. Hello. And what did you, have you done, Cortex? Uh, I helped with initial prototyping and research. Yep. And we're also joined by Pseudogravity. Hi. Hey. And you helped with... I wrote the code that does the statistical portion for estimating packet delays. Yeah. Um, so what we have in this video is RNG phishing. So the three of us have worked um, on... Well, the, the project's been going for like a month now and... Uh, we finally got it working and I want to show you it in the video today. So to use this thing, I'm going to uh, to type the cfish command, there's a link to the mod in the description. Uh, and let's go for some mending books. So we're going to go for book, or enchanted book with mending. Anything. Okay, and now we've set the Cracker to have a, a goal of mending books, and then we're just going to see what we get. So I've been fishing for about five minutes or so. Uh, I don't know exactly how long. And you can see I've got out of all of this loot, I've got one, two, three, I've got yeah, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen mending books out of uh, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one loot. So sixteen mending books out of twenty-one loot is an efficiency of 76%. Got three quarters of the right loot. In order to understand how this works, we must first take a closer look at the fishing bobber entity. So like all entities, the fishing bobber entity has its own RNG that's used to decide things like how long it takes until the fish bites and what angle the fish bites from, etc. But most importantly, it's used to decide what loot um, you get when you catch a fish. So in order for our fishing client to accurately decide what loot it's going to get, we need to crack the RNG, right? The fishing bobber RNG. Luckily, the, um, the one of the first things the fishing bobber RNG does is it decides the UUID of the phishing robber entity. The UUID stands for Universally Unique Identifier. It's um, just an ID that um, uniquely identifies this entity in the world uh, and it's generated randomly when the entity spawns. Um, the UUID is then sent to the client. The UUID is 128 bits um, which compared to the 48 bits of the RNG is more than enough information, in fact it's twice the amount of information, or more than twice, needed to crack the RNG. And so we can do that instantly as soon as uh, the phishing client receives from the phishing bobber from the server. When you right click a phishing rod, the client sends a packet to the server and the server will respond by spawning the fishing bobber entity. 
when the phishing robber entity arrives back on the client, um, the phishing client will crack its RNG. Um, from that point on, the phishing client will simulate every, like instantly simulate everything that the phishing robber entity will do um, between when you throw it and when the fish bites. For every tick that the fish is biting, the RNG is different, so you actually get a different opportunity for a different loot uh, every tick the fish um, is biting. And you need to be um, retracting the fishing rod on exactly the right tick to get exactly the right loot. So when you cast the fishing rod and the, the fishing client cracks the RNG, it instantly knows all possible loot that you can get uh, after the first time the fish bites. If that loot is not what you want, then it will retract the fishing rod again instantly. It won't bother to, to wait. That's why you see um, so much spam when you um, cast the fishing rod the first time. Um, and then once uh, once it decides that you can get um, l like the loot that you want, um, once it casts it, it will then wait until the fish bites. And then it will pull in the fishing rod. Um, on the exact, well, it will attempt to pull in the fishing rod on the exact right tick. And that's how the fishing client works. There is one small catch in the simulation, and that is when the bobber bobs back above the water again. Um, the There is a random number generator, another random number generator that's used that adds sort of an external source of randomness to the fishing bobber simulation. And I, I don't know why Moyang decided to do a, another um, external source of randomness, but they did. Um, and that is, we decided, was too annoying to simulate. So what we instead did is, um, is we made it so that you have to put the fishing bobber underneath a lily pad to stop, well, underneath a, a block, really, uh, to stop you, um, or to stop the fishing bobber from going above the water, so this external source of randomness never takes effect, so we are able to simulate the fishing bobber accurately. If only it were that simple. Um, so earlier I said that in order to, um, to get the right loot, you need to retract the rod on exactly the right tick. Well, a tick lasts 50 milliseconds. And as you can see from uh, the top left of my screen here, my ping is 89 milliseconds currently. I'm connected to a server in the US. Um, and the problem with that is, if I don't account for the ping in the, in the phishing client, then 89, an 89 millisecond delay is long enough for the phishing rod to be retracted on the wrong tick. Because this is a server-side tick, not a client-side tick. You have to send messages between the client and the server. Um, so we do account for the ping, but the thing is the ping is not the only factor that may cause um, a discrepancy between the, the client and the server. There is also um, the fact that the client ticks may not be perfectly aligned with the server ticks, and it all gets very complicated very quickly because even that's not the only factor. Um, so what we actually did is we used a statistical model um, on top of um, obviously adding the ping um, or subtracting the ping and the statistical model assumes that beyond the ping the packets uh, will arrive in a normally distributed um, with a normally distributed delay and yeah, we, we guess the, the mean of that normal distribution and, or the average of the normal distribution and um, and fire the fishing rod at the right time according to that. I'm going to hand you over to MC and pseudo, or pseudo gravity um, to, um, to explain the details of that. In order to accurately time your fishing attempts, you need to know the amount of delay or offset between the client and server times. Uh, whenever you attempt phishing, you can see what you actually received from the phishing attempt, so you know what possible actual ticks it arrived at. Uh, but 
There's also a factor of noise in the communication. So the delay between the client and server isn't a uniform, like it's not a precise value. It could follow some sort of, you know, normal distribution, have some amount of standard deviation in there. Uh, so it's kind of a two-stage problem of have you go fishing and you get like a cod or something. There's lots of possible times you'd have gotten that cod because it's a very common item. You need to know which of those timestamps for that item is the correct timestamp. Uh, and then given the list of items with all the different timestamps, uh, figure out what the mean standard deviation is. So uh, to help solve this problem, I'm using something called the expectation maximization algorithm, where I'm modeling the data as a mixture of a normal distribution, which represents every time that you send a packet that actually arrives at a standard time, and a uniform distribution, which represents chaotic, unpredictable noise, like if you had a packet loss that causes your fishing attempt to end up in a couple hundred milliseconds late or something. Uh, and given an estimate of the mean and standard deviation, you can both figure out which timestamp for which item is the most likely the correct timestamp, and you can figure out whether or not that timestamp belongs to the normal distribution or it belongs to that like a background uniform distribution of noise. So once you have like a list of samples and a list of timestamps per sample, it's easy to take a current estimate for your normal distribution, figure out where the samples belong, and then use your samples to update your normal distribution in order to get a better fit. That's that's basically the EM algorithm in a nutshell. Given a model fit, you can improve that model fit. Uh, and it works really well. It's guaranteed to converge to a local maximum. As, and the only issue is you need a good initial estimate. And for that, I'm essentially trying to find the best median for the data. As in, if you pick a certain time, for each sample, you figure out what timestamp is closer to that possible median value, and that the sums of deviations help determine how good a particular timestamp is at being a median. If, if you have a time where there's all of the different fishing attempts have possible timestamps that are close to it, that's a really good median, has a really low sum of absolute deviations. Uh, I also add some tapering to the edges to make outliers influence a bit less. A good median value that seems to fit a lot of the samples closely. I use that as the initial estimate for the mean. Then I can use that the average deviation as the initial estimate for the standard deviation. So given the list of timestamps for the different items, you can find the best median a good estimate for the mean and standard deviation from that, then you run the EM algorithm, which fits a normal distribution and also calculates what the noise level is, or the, which is essentially the rate of packet loss. And then that can tell you exactly when you should be tossing your fishing rod to achieve the highest likelihood that your packet actually arrives on a particular tick. And that's basically my summary of the statistics portion of the timing. Just a few things I want to say at the end of the video. Um, first of all, thank you for 10,000 subscribers. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever, um, I never thought I'd ever reach this. Um, it does um, sort of, sort of mean, well, not so much mean a lot to me in general, but it, it means a lot to me that um, lots of people find um, the things I do um, interesting. I hope I'm, you know, in you know even inspiring some people um, by by what I do. Um, yeah.
a um, couple of negative things to get out of the way. Um, well, first of all, Brexit. Uh, if you didn't know, I am not in favour of Brexit. I'm probably not going to say anything more than that in the video uh, because I don't uh, fancy uh, annoying half of Britain. Um, but yeah, you probably you probably noticed the the Brexit meme at the start of the video. That wasn't to like offend anyone or anything. That's just I thought it was funny, so I put it in. Um, and dream. So you're probably aware of the um, the recent uh, drama with dream. Um, in terms of uh, what I think is correct, um, obviously I think that. That Dream cheated because that's what the math says. Regardless of um, you know the like any emotions around it, Dream cheated. Uh, <laughs> uh, the the math behind it has been well explained by the moderation team, so I won't go through it here. Um, but I, what I w what I do want to say and point out is the way that Dream has handled the situation, especially towards the beginning put a lot of pressure on the on the moderators um, emotionally uh, made their lives hell so yeah I I don't I don't think anyone should have to go through that so yeah it's, it's just like the best thing dream could do is just admit that he cheated to be honest back on to some more positive stuff happy new year everyone it is 2021 um, I'm kind of looking forward to this year with uh, some hope like I think uh, many other people are 2020 on balance wasn't actually that bad of a year for me. I know it's been p pretty bad for many people, but um, yeah, uh, for me, like a couple of um, a, like really good things happened to me, and on balance, uh, because of that, it's been a pretty good year. Um, so I would like you know some of that that stuff to continue into 2021, and um, hopefully, if we can do away with this pandemic at some point, that would be nice. Um, but yeah, uh, Happy New Year and thanks for watching.